Hey everyone, Mr. Ray here. What I want to do is take you through with the isosceles triangle theorems in this video. So this is really a pair of theorems and what they say are very similar but just slightly different in the direction and they have to do with either the existence of an isosceles triangle or things we can say when we have an isosceles triangle. So up on the top here we have this first one. In a triangle, angles opposite congruent sides are congruent. So what this is saying is that if we have a triangle and we know that two of the sides in this triangle are congruent. All right, so here's my triangle, I have congruent sides. Then it's telling me that if I have congruent sides, that the angles opposite them, in other words, down in this direction and down in this direction, right? So the two angles across from those sides also have to be congruent. That would be this angle and this angle. In earlier grades, you called this like the base angles of the isosceles triangle, and you knew that if you had an isosceles triangle, the base angles were congruent. Now we're talking about a direction. We're saying that if we have a triangle and we know that it has congruent sides, then we can say that the angles opposite those congruent sides also have to be congruent. Now this works in the reverse direction, what we call the converse in mathematics, and it says that if you have a triangle, the sides opposite congruent angles are congruent. So this time, it's the angles that we know are congruent, so say these two angles here, if this is congruent to this one, and it's telling us that if we look across from them, the sides opposite those angles, namely up in this direction and up in this direction, what we'll find is a pair of congruent sides, right? So you can see there's a nice symmetry between these two pictures. The only difference is the direction of the implication. Here we're saying we have congruent sides, so if we look across from them, we'll find congruent angles. And down here we're saying we have congruent angles, and if we look across from them, we will find congruent sides. So with these two theorems in mind, uh, we proved these in class, uh, so uh, maybe I'll do a video for that, I'm not sure, but I want to take a look at how to use these in this video. So let's take a look at a proof here, and these are actually two of the proofs from the homework tonight if you're in my class, and if not, you can just, you know, copy, pause the video, copy them down, and follow along. So the first thing I always want to do when I'm looking at a proof is mark up my picture. So they tell me here that MP is congruent to QN. Well, that's this little piece here, MP, and this little piece here, QN, and they also tell me angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So that's angle 1 congruent to angle 2. Now I'm looking to prove the triangle MKN is isosceles. Notice MKN is this large triangle here. In order to prove that it's isosceles, I will have to prove that this side is congruent to this side. Right? So there's a lot of different ways to do this proof. It's kind of a fun one because there's at least two or three pretty different ways to tackle it. I'm going to go after one that utilizes this theorem we just talked about in a triangle sides opposite congruent angles. So if you focus for a moment on this triangle here, K, P, Q. So that's clearly a triangle with two congruent angles. Well, according to this theorem here, if I have a triangle with two congruent angles, then the sides opposite those angles must be congruent. Which means that here, if I were to look across from angle one and across from angle two, inside of this triangle, I'm gonna find a pair of congruent sides. So that makes these two segments congruent. And if that's true, maybe you can start to see the beginning of triangle congruence for these outside little triangles, right? So I've got a pair of sides here. I've got a pair of sides here, MP and QN. And if I use one and two to find their supplements, say I call this angle three over here and four, right? Since one and two are congruent, then their supplements are gonna have to be congruent. And that'll give me side, angle, side. So let's take a look at how that actually goes if I were to write it up in a proof. I might start with the fact that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and that's of course just given to me. And then the next thing I would do is use this to make this argument about this isosceles triangle here. So I can say KP is congruent to KQ, and my reason is going to be that theorem in a triangle, sides that are opposite congruent angles are congruent. Right? So in this triangle here, the sides across from the congruent angles are congruent. And that gives me a pair of sides in my triangles. Now I also know that MP is congruent to QN, and so I can just go ahead and drop that in there if I want, right? Like MP congruent to QN. That was also given. And that's just another pair of sides in this triangle, right there and there. So what I'm after now is angles 3 and 4. Okay, so this is going to be a linear pair argument. I might start by saying that angles 1 and angle 3 and angles 2 and 4 are linear pair. The reason for that is that adjacent angles that form a line are linear pairs. And now from this linear pair argument, if I just scroll a little bit here, 
I can go ahead and say that these angles are supplementary, right? So angle one is supplementary to angle three, and angle two is supplementary to angle four. And that's because linear pairs are supplementary. And now in step six, what I'm able to do is argue that since one and two are congruent, that was given to me notice up here, right? One and two are congruent. So since one and two are congruent, their supplements also have to be congruent. That means that angle three is congruent to angle four. Oops, sorry about that. And that's because the supplements of congruent angles are congruent. So if I just do a little bit of record keeping here, I've got a pair of angles in my triangles right there. I've got a pair of sides in my triangles right there. And I've got another pair of angles in my triangles right there. If we just scroll back up and take a look, we've got side, angle, side in these two triangles. Let's for a moment talk about how to name them. If I call the triangle on the left triangle MPK, then what's the triangle on the right going to be? MPK, I'm going to say NQK. Remember, it's important that those go in the same order. You have to list triangles with corresponding sides or parts in the same order. So let me just scroll this down here. So that's going to be my next step, that those triangles are congruent. And that's going to be side, angle, side, triangle congruence. Now that those triangles are congruent, that's these little skinny guys on the outside, it's clearly going to be true that MK is congruent to KN. This is because they are corresponding parts of those congruent triangles. So I can come down here now and say MK is congruent to KN. And that's because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And finally, I can say that triangle MKN is isosceles. Because what is an isosceles triangle after all? An isosceles triangle is simply any triangle with two congruent sides. Well, two or more, technically. Any triangle with two congruent sides is isosceles. And there's our proof. We can go ahead and put a proof box there. Right? So here we go, a simple proof using the fact that in a triangle, sides opposite congruent angles are congruent. And uh, there you can see the proof right there. Right. Let's take a look at another one involving this theorem, featuring a little bit more prominently this time. So again, I'll begin by marking up the picture. I have AB congruent to AC, so that would be this piece here and this piece here. I also have AD bisects angle BAC. Okay, well what does that mean? If AD bisects angle BAC, well this is angle BAC, right? B to A to C. And if that's bisected, that means it's going to be divided into two congruent angles. Let's go ahead and call those three and four. So we can get those angles congruent. And then hopefully you see that with a quick reflexive on AD there, I've got a set of congruent triangles, right? By side, angle, side again. So let's go ahead and write that up and then see how that plays into the isosceles triangle thing. So we've got AB congruent to AC, that was a given. And then we have this angle bisector. So I guess maybe I'll just keep that in step one, right? AD bisects angle BAC. I'll just go ahead and leave that in step one since they're both givens. And I'll let step two be that statement about those angles being congruent, right? So we have angle three congruent to angle four. And that's because an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. Now if we come ahead here and grab a quick reflexive on AD, so we state that AD is congruent to itself by reflexive, now we have a pair of sides, a pair of angles, and a pair of sides in these two triangles. So if I call the first triangle, let's say BAD, that's going to be congruent to triangle. So what would that be? BAD is going to correspond to CAD. Triangle CAD. And there's the two triangles that we can say are congruent in the next step of this proof here. So down in step four, I've got congruent triangles, and my reason is side angle side triangle congruence. So we haven't really talked about how this is going to help us prove that angle one is congruent to angle two yet, but hopefully you're starting to see where this is going. 
Angle 1 and 2 are down in this smaller triangle down here. Maybe I will highlight that in red for the moment, right? So this triangle down here is the triangle that angle 1 and 2 are a part of. Now, if these angles are going to be congruent, then by the theorem we talked about earlier, these sides have to be congruent. But these sides, BD and DC, are actually part of the pair of triangles that I've already proven. So would you agree with me that since those triangles are congruent, it must also be true that BD is congruent to DC? That's another statement about corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So we can go down here in the proof and say BD is congruent to DC because of corresponding parts in congruent triangles. And then what does that do for us? Well, inside of this little red triangle now, we've got two congruent sides. But we know that in a triangle, if we have two congruent sides, we can look across from those sides and we can find congruent angles. So now that's going to tell me that angle one is congruent to angle two. And that's actually what they asked us to prove in this proof, right? That angle one is congruent to angle two. So we can finish this proof now in step six by saying six angle 1 congruent to angle 2 and the reason is going to be that in a triangle now this time I'm going to say the angles right the angles opposite congruent sides are congruent and we're finished with that proof now one thing that I'll make a point out of is it's very important that you're talking about in a triangle right so oftentimes students will just feel like if they have any pair of sides they can say that angles are congruent but it's in a triangle that this works. So you've got to be able to find one triangle, like here we're working in triangle BDC, right, or BCD, doesn't matter. And inside of this triangle, I've got two congruent sides, which means I have two congruent angles across from those sides. If I flip back to the last one, you'll see the same thing. In this triangle, the blue one, right, PQK, I've got two congruent angles this time it was. So it means across from those angles, I'm going to find congruent sides. So we have to be in one triangle in order for this to work. That's a very important part of this theorem. So there you have your isosceles triangle theorems and a couple of proofs showing you one of each. They're saying essentially the same thing, just in different directions. This one goes from sides to the angles, and this one goes from angles to the sides. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the actual copy of the two proofs here so you can see my work, and you can also see a blank page if you want to follow along. So if you enjoyed this video, please let me know. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and keep coming back for more. Have a great day.